Hello everyone, this is Karen with the Bain Group. In today's video, we're going to look at the file viewer web part within SharePoint Online. Here are the topics we'll be covering. What does the web part do? Explore limitations? And lastly, examples of where to use this web part. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm now sharing my SharePoint Online site where I have a page with various file viewer web parts. The intention of the file viewer web part is, as the name explains, the ability to show different file types onto your modern page. This helps prevent the extra click to get to the document library, or if you were on a communication site and your sole intention is for your viewers to just see the document versus editing it. Now that we have a better understanding of what this web part does, let's go through the process of adding another file viewer web part to the page. While in edit mode of your page, let's click on the plus and search for the file of your web part. Once in here, it's going to ask you to select the source of the file. We have a few options ranging from documents we recently opened, files from our OneDrive, files within different document libraries stored on the site, uploading a file from our desktop, or from a link from OneDrive for Business or SharePoint Online. If at the moment you don't have any files to show, you can hit the cancel button and the web part will just show as is. A neat trick that I want to share is if, for example, you edit the web part of the file viewer, you have the option to connect it to a source. That meaning to any document library where you're able to select different files to show directly on the page. So if we click on the ellipse and hit connect to source, we're going to select the document library that's already on our page shown right here in the left column. Do note you do need to add in the document web part in order to connect the file of your web part to a source. So once we hit republish, we'll give our page to load. If we go to the left and select on this PDF, on the right, you can see that it dynamically displays the content pretty fast. And we're able to scroll through, zoom in, you know, rotate, or open in a new window if I need to expand and see the entire Word document. If I do click on another file, you can see that it still only shows the PDF. So just keep in mind that you have to deselect each file each time you want to show a new one. Now, if I go back up and enter again into the edit mode of my page, I would like to explain that for each different file type that you add on to your file viewer web part, when you go into the edit web part, it's showing different options that you can choose. So for our Word document, we can start this on a particular page in Excel, seeing different workbooks um, or a particular table. And again, um, some file types won't have any options. So it's best to explore by adding it in to your page and seeing what option is available with each file type. Another thing to point out is that for me, I personally like to show my file view web part all in one column. As for that, if I go to edit the section and go to three columns, you can see that my web part fits the three column width, but it's kind of hard to see all the content within your Word document, and again, within your Excel. While there is a scroll bar to help you navigate throughout the content, it's a bit difficult to see everything at once. What's also neat is that each file of your web part, if the file itself has unique permission, it does respect it. So if this is an Excel that you're not able to edit or even view it, it will display a little message box letting you know you don't have the correct permission to be able to edit or view the item. So again, just to quickly recap, some best places to use this web part is to show any type of file on your modern page. It's great to use it if you're connecting to a source and you need to go through with your team um, all the different document content within or another great example, if you're on an HR page and there's particular policies that are always shown to the user or they need information on, 
Um, connecting it to that document library source is also another great example. So with that, I just want to say thank you again for joining me in this tips and trick video. If you found this video helpful, please give us a like and hit the subscribe button to be notified and we'll see you next time.